is happening, Magnusites. Uh, let's uh, actually keep the dog a little bit stuffy in here. But um, I need to see what's going on with this new Loki episode. Because this one was crazy. Things are picking up. And I'm wondering what the hell is going on. You can check out all my reactions on Patreon. That rhyme ain't to pay the game. Bars! Now, get over and subscribe to Cosmic Wonder. And sit down and watch my reaction to what he has to say about this. Let's get it. What's going on, everybody? It's Warner. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. And wow, what an incredible episode of Loki. And I actually think I figured out what is going on in the Loki series. I think really? I have figured out who the main villain is, and I have a lot of evidence to support it. And that's the first thing I'm going to be breaking down. Also, I think this is clearly the best episode that we've got from Disney+, Plus, including anything from WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but let me know what you would rate no. this episode out of 10 no. in the comments down below. So I'll start off by talking about what I actually think is happening in the Loki oh. series and who the villain is. And if you are confused about the ending and the mid credit scene, this is the video for you because I'm going to explain everything. And thank All you right. Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. More on them in a bit. If you're loving the Loki series so far, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So we'll start off with my theory of who I believe to be the villain and how the Loki series is set up. And then we'll dive into the ending explained and the mid credit scene explained as well. Now let's dive into the ending explained and the mid-credit breakdown. And here's my personal theory on what I believe is happening. I believe that one of two different things are going to be happening here. One is what I've been stating from the very beginning. I never believed that there were timekeepers, and if there were indeed real timekeepers, I believe that one or all of them were Kang the Conqueror. Now, I don't believe that there are any timekeepers. I believe that it is Nathaniel Richards, aka Kang, behind the TVA. For those of you who may not know who mm. Kang the Conqueror is, he is essentially the master of time travel, oh, and he is visible. confirmed to be entering the MCU during the film Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, and he is going to be played by the oh. actor Jonathan Majors. Now, now before I dive a little bit deeper, for those of you who are saying, well, it can't be him because they confirmed him for Ant-Man, well, they're obviously not going to reveal that he's going to be in Loki because if he is indeed the big villain, that would ruin it. And Loki could very well set up all of the events that are going to happen, not only in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, but in the MCU. Spider-Man No Way Home, mm -hmm. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you name it. This is just the beginning, the and Loki will most there. likely end with the dismantling of the TVA, but perhaps not the killing of the actual villain. Especially if it is Kang, he will go on to be in Ant-Man 3. Now, as I mentioned, Kang is the master of time travel. His real name is Nathaniel Richards, and he's a possible descendant of Reed Richards, and also believe that he could be a descendant of Victor Von Doom as well. Now, Kang is actually from the future. He's actually from the 31st century. In the 31st century, he stumbles upon time travel technology created by Victor Von Doom. And the first thing he does is travel back in time to ancient Egypt aboard a sphinx-shaped time ship and becomes the Pharaoh Ramatut. Now, minor spoilers come Coming up right here, we have seen a leaked photo and a leaked video, really, of a Sphinx. This could be a coincidence, or it could perhaps be Kang's vehicle. Also, Kang has time-traveled a lot, and there are different versions of Kang, or, as we would call them in the Loki series, variants. It is possible that all of these variants got together, formed the Council of the Kangs, and created the TVA. Now check this out. There is a version of Kang called Immortus, and I believe that this could be the Kang that we're dealing with. Now before Kang the Conqueror was Immortus, he would go on conquering different timelines. He did this until he was approached by the Timekeepers. Yes, they are actual beings in the comics. They are actually aliens from the future. And in the future, they are the last living creatures in existence, and they make a deal with Kang, for Kang to become their agent and start preserving timelines rather than conquering them. Okay. In exchange for this, they grant Kang immortality. He accepts the offer and reinvents himself, calling himself Immortus, the lord of the other dimensional realm of Limbo. And if you think about it, Limbo could be the realm which all of the Lokis and Mobius and all the other variants that got pruned could be in right now. They're in a limbo world outside of the sacred timeline and outside of these other branches of time. They're essentially in a world in which the TVA exists, but a different pocket of it. 
Now get this, in the comics, Limbo is a timeless dimension. Outside of time, like the TVA. And guess what is in the dimension Limbo? Chronopolis, the headquarters of Kang the Conqueror. Now what exists outside of time in the MCU? The Quantum Realm. And what have we discovered exists within the Quantum Realm? We have discovered that there is a Quantum City. This was revealed to us by Marvel themselves. They told us to look at a very particular scene in which the city was discovered. This could be Chronopolis because it exists in the Quantum Realm and the Quantum Realm is outside of time. This could be right now where everything is taking place. The TVA could exist in Chronopolis, which is inside of the Quantum Realm, which is outside of time. I believe that this could be the case for Loki. Kang the Conqueror could be the actual villain. He is the person that could be responsible for creating the TVA. Now, the timekeepers may or may not be real in the MCU, but it's almost irrelevant. The main point is that they are seemingly being controlled by somebody, and it looks like that person is indeed Kang. Also, keep in mind that Ravona Renslayer in the comics is Kang's love. They are lovers in the comics, so why is Renslayer a part of Loki, a time travel show? It could definitely be because of her relation to Kang. And she has just been revealed to be a villain. She clearly knows everything. She knew that the timekeepers were fake. Because think about it, if she didn't, she would probably be like Mobius. She would be questioning everything about the TVA. But she knows. She knows that all of the workers for the TVA were not created by the timekeepers. She knows that they were variants. She is in the know about everything. Why? Because she knows the person who is truly in charge. Not to mention, in episode so two, I believe, Mobius mentions that there is another secret analyst that Ravona has on the side that Mobius doesn't know about. This could very well be Kang. And since she knows everything and is essentially evil, she is probably in it with Kang. So I truly do believe that Kang is the villain of the Loki series. Because you have to imagine that there are very few people out there in the Marvel Universe that could create a sacred timeline, that could create the TVA, that could could create an organization that could literally delete branch timelines. There are cosmic entities out there that could possibly do this, but then there is Kang who is the master of time. So Kang just makes sense, especially since they already announced that Jonathan Majors is playing Kang in Quantumania. Now, there is another possible option. We talked about this on my live show with my co-host, Culture Chris, over at Cosmic Culture. If you're not subscribed to that channel, be sure to go over and do so. But the other option could be that it's actually Loki. Another variant of Loki is actually about, responsible for creating the TVA. That's if there's one thinking. thing that we learned That's from what I thought he was to and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is that these Before Disney Plus shows do really focus on the main characters in the title. One Division, the Falcon, and the Winter Soldier, and Loki. I would not be surprised if some I'm actually variant going to of Loki, right a now. King Loki, Here. was in charge of everything. Thank you. Especially if you think about a common theme that each episode has kind of had so far, and that is a superior Loki. Our Loki has wanted to feel like the superior Loki this entire time. And it's very clear that Sylvie believes her to be the superior Loki. So it's pretty clear that this is how Loki and possibly every variant of Loki feels. They are the god of mischief, a god, above people, even above above themselves. <laughs> and if it is some type of King Loki responsible for creating the TVA, what bigger threat could there be to that Loki than all of the other Lokis? Because it seems very clear that Lokis in particular get on the TVA and the so-called Timekeeper's nerves. In fact, they brought both Lokis into the Timekeeper's presence just to kill them. So clearly there is some type of relevance with Loki. Could it be perhaps because Loki himself, a variant of Loki, created everything and kind of hates himself because in this self-assured narcissistic way he believes that only himself could take him down. These are my two theories on who could be behind everything, but I do think I hit the nail on the head with the Kang theory. To me, there is a lot that lines up to make this all seem pretty legitimate, but you'll have to let me know what you think about this. So in episode three, I think you could be right about Loki the Kang. that the TBA wasn't actually created by the timekeepers. She told him that all of the people that worked there were actually variants taken from different timelines. Right. From there, their memories were erased, and then they were told that they were created by the timekeepers and they worked for the TVA. They were created for that specific purpose and didn't know any life outside of that. 
This was obviously a lie. They were actually variants who had real lives. Sylvie told this to Loki, and then Loki told this to Mobius. Now, of right. course, Mobius goes on and realizes the truth, that Loki is telling him the truth, and he is a variant. He realizes that Rinslayer, who he liked, couldn't be trusted. And for good measure, it looks like she pretty much killed Hunter C-20 after Hunter C-20 realized that she did indeed have a life. Yeah. So, at the end of episode 2, where Hunter C-20's mind was kind of going crazy and she kept saying, it's real, it's real. What she was referring to was her life before the TVA, her life as an actual person. It's real. Her old life was real. So Mobius takes Renslayer's temp pad. He exchanges it for his, walks away, and finds out the truth. He goes to Loki and says, I believe you, and we have to trust each other. Loki then calls him his friend, and the two of them do indeed trust each other and go on to start their plan. Unfortunately, right. their plan is cut short as Renslayer obviously realizes that her temp pad is not hers, but it I is indeed Mobius's. Happen. So she is waiting for Loki and Mobius when they come out. Now, Mobius tries to play it cool, but he obviously realizes that Renslayer knows, and it's kind of the end of the line for him. He mentions his old life before the TVA and says, maybe I even had a jet ski, which kind of touches my heart because all I want is for him to ride a jet ski in this series. But unfortunately, <laughs> right after he says that, Renslayer says prune him, and they do. Now, of course, I'm going to touch back on this in just a bit, but let's keep going and talk about how Loki and Sylvie end up in front of the Timekeepers. On the way there... In the elevator, Sylvie asks Renslayer if she remembers her. She took her when she was a young kid, and she took her before Renslayer was actually a judge. She was a hunter. She says, yes, I remember you. And of course she does. She was the Loki that got away and caused all of these problems and got in a lot of trouble for it. But Sylvie wanted to know what her crime was against the sacred timeline to make the TVA come after her as a kid and track her down her entire life chasing yeah. her. In which Renslayer replies, I don't remember. Which is a devastating blow blow to Sylvie. However, it definitely seems like she is lying and definitely saying this to intentionally hurt Sylvie. Exactly. So I do believe that we will find out why the TVA went after her when she was just a kid at some point in time in the series. Now, right before they take Sylvie, she has a talk with Hunter B-15 because in the second episode, she enchanted Hunter B-15 in which Hunter B-15 remembered some of her past life and she realizes that she did have a life before the TVA. So she confronts Sylvie about this and asks her to show her her life before the TVA, in which Sylvie does show her, and Hunter B-15 says, I looked happy. So from oh, here on out, she realizes that okay. the TVA lied to her. She was actually taken from a timeline and not created by the TVA and decides to help Sylvie and Loki out. And my we reaction, to I the thought time she said, I had And we happy. finally meet the timekeepers, or do we? Hunter B-15 walks in and throws Sylvie her sword. Then Hunter B-15, Sylvie, and Loki all fight together, fighting the other hunters. Eventually, they win. Sort of. It doesn't look like they actually kill Hunter B-15. Right. If you notice, they just punch her and she falls to the ground, yeah. so it's almost like she just gets knocked out and is down. She definitely wasn't pruned. But eventually, no. Loki and Sylvie defeat all of the hunters and Renslayer, and the timekeepers say, you're a child of the TVA too, Sylvie. We can talk. In which Sylvie immediately throws her sword at the timekeeper's head. It falls to the floor, and the timekeepers immediately start laughing. Why? Because they're not actually real. They're androids, and they instantly deactivate after laughing at Sylvie and Loki. And not to brag, but I have called this from the very beginning I I did say that I don't think the timekeepers are real. And that's because I believe that the true villain is Kang, and more on that in just a bit. Now, from here, a very important part happens. Both Sylvie and Loki thought that the Timekeepers were in charge of the TVA, but they realized that it goes higher. And they don't know who created the TVA. But Loki turns to Sylvie and says, I have to tell you something. He says, we will figure this out. In which Sylvie asks, how do you know that? And Loki says, because, uh, back on Lamentis. And then he pauses for a bit and says, this is new for me. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> he gets pruned. Now, real quick, to answer the question, what was he going to say to Sylvie, I believe it was, I love you. Yes, he <laughs> fell in love with himself. And yeah. this is actually addressed in a pretty Very clever weird. way in the Mobius scene. <laughs> Mobius lies to Loki and tells him that they killed Sylvie. He then just sits there and studies Loki, and he says, Come on, you like her. And he starts to kind of make fun of him, asking, Does she like you too? 
Then he starts to kind of laugh at the situation, saying two variants of the same being, especially you, forming this kind of sick, twisted, romantic relationship. That's pure chaos. That, that could weird. break reality. <laughs> and that's when he talked about a Nexus event. The Nexus event was really the two Lokis falling in love with each other. Mobius says, what an incredible seismic narcissist you fell for yourself. Which is weird, but also not weird, and I'm also oddly okay with it. I mean, heck, the moral story of Loki could be love yourself but that is yes. what he was going to tell Sylvie I love you but he gets pruned <laughs> and then Sylvie turns it on Rinslayer she tells her to kill her but Sylvie spares her and tells her you're going to tell me everything then we have a post credit scene yeah. which is truly epic and comes as a very big relief we see Loki lying on the ground panting heavily he says is this hell am I dead and we hear a voice say not yet Loki gets up and we hear another voice say, but you will be unless you come with us. We then see four different variants of Loki, and they are very, very different. Four. Here, Richard E. Three. Grant's character is finally revealed. He is listed under the cast credits as classic Loki, and as we see here, there are four. he has a super complex <laughs> classic Loki look. We then have Duobia Apare, who is, is listed head. as boastful Loki. And this Loki is a mystery, especially if you consider the fact that he is holding some type of hammer. Could this be a different type of Mjolnir, Thor's hammer? Or could this be Loki's very own hammer that he gets possibly from Odin? Or could he have made this himself in his own different timeline? Then we have Kid Loki. Kid Loki comes right from the comics, but Kid Loki is holding something very in particular, a crocodile Loki. Now, in the comics, there is a Thor frog, but we haven't mm -hmm. actually seen a crocodile Loki, and we haven't seen boastful Loki before. But the big question really really is here, and I know everybody has been wondering, where exactly are they? And yeah. thanks to some trailers that have already been shown, I believe we have actually figured this out. It seems very clear now that when people get pruned by the TVA, they don't actually die. Rather, they get sent to a different dimension where all the other pruned characters go. If you recall, in episode 2, Owen Wilson's character Mobius actually said they probably pruned more Lokis than any other type of variant. And if we actually uh, examine uh. a trailer that has been showed to us for Loki, we actually find a variant that Mobius showed before in episode 2. We see another African-American Loki variant, and he's fighting alongside what seems to be President Loki and other variations of Loki as well. So here we can assume that these pruned Lokis aren't actually dead, they're the all hell? in the same place. And it looks like they're about to start a Loki revolution. Now, this does seem to be the case. This seems to be real. The which Loki means revolution. Mobius is most likely alive as well. Which means that this is most likely going to lead up to the big reveal of who is exactly is in charge of the TVA. Who created the TVA? Now, Sylvie has Renslayer right now, and Renslayer might tell her everything that's going on, in which she'll go and tell Loki and all the other Lokis. Because Mobius does not know what's going on. He just found out that the TVA did not create him, that he had a life before the TVA. So, although I do think Mobius and Loki are going to be teaming up, I yeah, think Sylvie is a big definitely. part of the equation here. But, of course, the big question is, who exactly is behind all of this who created the TVA are there actual real timekeepers now I will be doing more breakdowns about episode 4 including oh, some Lord. shot by shot breakdowns for Easter eggs but this video is about the main very important parts of Loki episode 4 so be sure to let me know what you think about my theory in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos don't forget to give the video a like for live updates you can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter and as always thank you all so much for watching woof, woof. well I believe you I believe you're on to something there. I think you're right about Kang. I do. I do. I think you're right. But, I, I, yeah, I guess we'll have to find out, like, did he create that? And I don't know. It was a damn good video, Cosmic. Damn good. Make sure y'all get over there and subscribe to him. He knows his stuff. Oh, man. Post comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Who is it? Huh? And if you enjoyed my reaction, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. 10 million subscribers. Woo!